Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Today Throws Nation, and in today's video, what we're going to do is take you back a couple weeks. We did a free webinar that we hosted up, and we did one on back on March 25th, right when all this had started. And uh, one of the things we were doing was talking about that it's easier to throw further, and we kind of start talking about how to see the throw, look at the one and a half to two second difference. We do some comparison where we show, like some of the videos we've done here on YouTube recently, where we're showing what a world class thrower and a beginning throwers, and so we kind of just show how we're looking at the throw and helping you understand that throw is about efficiency. We need to be working on the things that are going to be position oriented. When the throw happens in full speed, there's just not enough time. So learning that, developing your knowledge base, that's one of the key things. We're on quarantine time, so we're trying to make the most of it and provide you guys with more information to help you learn more. And so what we want to do is just kind of get you in the right mindset. We'll also do a comparison in here to Piotr Malachowski and a beginning thrower that throws around 100 feet. So it's a really interesting to look at again how actually close these throwers are they're actually moving closer than one might think and that's what we're going to cover in this video so check it out be sure to stay safe stay strong and we'll see you on the next video talking about today is time and so maximizing your time and obviously now things being incredibly difficult some people can't get to their athlete and people you know not allowed to have organized practices just even when when you have limited time now or limited association with your athletes and when things resume thing that we're always trying to focus on is maximizing your time now and after this is done so one of the reasons why that's difficult is that the throw is really about one and a half to two seconds and we say that range because world-class athlete is about one and a half seconds and a beginner high school athlete 120 foot high school junior and a 230 foot you know olympic gold medalist and the difference from from the time that implements back to the time it leaves their hand is roughly for her is about one and a half seconds for her it's between that in two seconds so what's really happening in the throw really how do you focus and train and you know how do you simplify the complexity of what's going on in two seconds that's kind of what we're trying to talk about tonight. So as we talk about, there's two key factors. How do you see the throw? So like when we put this, you look at the throw in normal speed, right? So this is, this is a athlete. Again, she had a 98 foot PR as a sophomore. We've been doing a lot of work, teaching her down bad habits, reestablishing things. Now here's a, your world-class athlete, right? So here we're looking at probably a 225 foot throw. And you can see again, so when you look at the throw in those terms of here's how they're moving, now you look at them side by side, there's not a massive difference in the time. So whether you're a high school coach or you're dealing with youth athletes, that time frame is so small, but how are you going to look at it? So this is how we look at it. So this is what our six pillars are all about. So when you put them next to each other, now you can do comparisons you can start to look at your throw, start to see inefficiencies, compare it to elite throwers. It's just a better way of looking at it. So we're going to be training motor patterns and we're going to be training progressions. So that's what we talk about. How many of you guys, when you're in practice, like just throw, you just have your throwers get in, they warm up, they take their stand throws, they go to full throws. I was working with an athlete recently that came in from out of state and that's pretty much how they run their practice. A couple stand throws, go to fulls and that's the practice. Then there's people that are drilling and throwing. Um, that would be obviously more preferential. And then there's specifically how do you address each pattern in the throw? So how do you look at each pillar and how and what what is it exactly that you're going to be doing? So like I said, when you just look at this comparison here, you can see the difference in like the pillar three. This athlete's over rotated. Here's Sandra Perkovich, big wide sweep. We're working on a narrower sweep. Orbit path is different. How she's carrying the discus is completely different, right? So these are all the things we're going to look at. When you look at that pillar four, this is what we talk about, the transition. And you would see, like, here we're starting to see some major differences. This athlete's obviously, Perkovich is wrapping the discus. She's going to get her hips ahead. And this athlete's kind of learning that. But again, when you look at them side by side, and you start to compare the positions, it's amazing what a difference. This is, you know, 110 foot difference in ability, position, experience, and how long does it take to get to this? You can see at one token, they're not horribly off. And that's what we think is really tough about how you coach and how you train. And if you're focusing on the on the key details, you're going to get better results in less time. You know, throwing takes time. So like you said, whether it's 
faith here or Perkovich. If you have limited time, you have to optimize your time. You have to focus on the right things. You know, you want to get the most out of your training time, even when the things hopefully go back to normal. Now, the thing is that we kind of talk about, you know, one of the things that you can do during this downtime is knowledge is going to be the key and studying more and understanding exactly what you're doing. This is what the chain reaction is all about. So we're going to train those positions and then we're going to put them together. We'll go through some videos. So I'm going to pull up my screen and here's another example. So let's look at a guy. Here's a young thrower. So this is a freshman in high school. He's been to multiple camps of ours. He lives a couple hours away. So he's only done a little bit of training. And you can see how he's moving as we go here. And he kind of goes in slow-mo. And again, you look at his throw. So you see his one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, now we look at Malachowski, right? One of the best ever. And you're going to just see how, how fast he is. That's one of his trademarks, right, is speed. And then when you break it down, you can start to see his throw better. And this is what everybody tends to do. Um, now, when you look at him again, side by side, this is where you can see the difference in the speed. So this is 100 feet versus, you know, 200. And this, this particular throw is probably 225 feet in that range. So you just see now when we do a comparison again and we start to see how it's going to start to work. We look at the differences is what's going on. Now you're going to see angles. Where's the hips? Where's the shoulders? Where's the sweep leg? You can see this guy's got a much more active sweep leg. Pillar two is what we call is setting up maximum power, right? We're trying to get that position. You can see that the head follows the hips. And this young guy moves pretty good, but he's, you know, he's just a freshman. Now, when you see this is where you start to see the difference in the speed, how the how Malachowski is really driving into the throw. Um, and again, where you can see where the discus is now, as you watch him go and he goes to his pillar four, this is where you really see Malachowski is going to be coming down and this athlete's kind of moving up and around. And then as you see him hit the power position, right? This young guy's got some, actually some pretty good stuff. He's learning how to reverse pretty good block, pretty good mechanics. And so when you see the difference again, this is why I, I, I understand in, intrinsically when you go, Young throwers, you guys out there that are coaching high school kids and then coaching youth kids, you can see that this kid isn't that far off of what's world class, but to get to this point obviously takes years. And that's what I was saying and pulled up a little bit before. There's no shortcut. It's only going to be about how, how efficient you can spend your time. And that's really what we're trying to emphasize. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll pull up one more example and we'll look at the rotational shot. So here's another guy. This is a kid I just worked with, and this was on his third day of training. This is an athlete who came in from out of state as well, and we just started teaching him the throwing chain reaction. We did a kind of before and after, and we started him how to, how to really open up a little bit better, how to come through his throw. Now, when you look at somebody like Kovacs, you'll see, again, the difference in the speed. Obviously, he's using the big shot. This is over 75 feet, and then you see when you see a comparison and you see the difference in the speed, that's really what's changing. So here's a 50 some foot high school kid and here's the world champion. And so again, when we start to look at it in these terms, look at how similar they're going to be, but this is what we're teaching this athlete. We were teaching him how to move and based on the six pillars. Now we were doing on very specific things and we made really big progress in a very short period of time, a matter of just a couple of days. And I have the before and after. I, I, I can show you guys that later. But you can see the difference in, in how the pillars and where we're wrapping and what we're focusing on. So again, if we're at this point in the sprint, look at the difference in the sweep leg. Look at the difference of where as we're going to progress through the throw. You can see how Joe's arm moves out here and how it's going to basically stay there. And that's what we were starting to teach this athlete. How is he going to rewrap? That's what we're teaching in that pillar four position right? And then how are we pulling into the power position? And then right here. So now you're going to see the difference. What we were teaching is how to get this athlete to keep this shoulder opening out longer like this way, right? And then this is where you can see Joe's arm is really extended and it's going to come around and he's going to smash the block. And now you can see the difference as they come through. Joe's goes a little more vertical and that's the key.